Hey gang, Aaron Fisher here with another episode of the Card Magic Minute. This is my chance to share with you some of the invaluable lessons that my students are learning every week when they study with me regularly during the course of my online personal training program. Um, you know, no slight can be done well without misdirection, without focus, without an awareness of where you're supposed to be looking when. And I think we often make the assumption when we get uh, entranced with what we consider to be a particularly effective illusion or a particularly fun or easy technique that we can just sort of do it and get away with it. And I think there is no greater example of what I'm talking about than Edward Victor's depth illusion, which is often called uh, tilt. Right? And let me demonstrate it for you just in case you haven't seen it. I'm going to take this card, the Ten of Spades, and I'm going to just stick it in the pack like so. Right? If I just snap my fingers, that card comes to the top. That's the Ten of Spades. Now, of course, for those of you who don't know what tilt is, I'll explain it to you right now. Uh, it's a very lovely depth illusion. What's happening is I'm just taking that card and I'm sticking it. You see how it looks like it's going right there in the center of the deck? It's not, actually. It's going into a break under the top or uh, top cards of the pack. Now the problem is, it's pretty easy to do. In fact, it's a lot like the double uh, lift and turnover we were talking about in a recent episode of the Card Magic Minute. The actual get ready for it is much, much uh, more complex than the move itself, right? Because it, you can, in fact, start with a break under two cards beforehand, in which case you can literally just take that card off and go here, right? That's probably the easiest way to do it. You can, of course, also do a variation of the Robert Houdin break technique that we were already discussing a couple weeks ago uh, and just literally gesture here and then get into it one-handed. But of course, that takes a little bit more practice. So today we're just going to assume that you have, with a suitable delay, gotten a break, perhaps by one of the techniques I've already shared in a previous episode of the Card Magic Minute. You've got a nice break there, and here I am ready for tilt. And there's what that break looks like. It's a nice, healthy break extending along the entire back of the pack. You want to make sure that the card is not bent at all. Now the problem is when magicians get a hold of tilt, what they tend to do is get stuck like a deer in headlights, right? Because it's such a good illusion, they just think they can look at it. And this is what they end up doing. They end up looking at it and going, look. And, and that's sort of like their being as amazed as the audience. And in fact, when magicians stare at the deck that way in the middle of the tilt, they're actually getting more amazed than the audience. They're sort of being entranced by the wonderful illusion, which as we all know, uh, is, is half the fun in magic anyway, when we get some trick and we just look at it and we stare at it in the mirror and we go, whoa, that looks so great, you know? And of course that's a lot of fun, but that works for us because we're magicians. When we want to actually perform something like this effectively for an audience, we have to manage the focus a little bit better. And tilt, there's been a lot of different handlings and methods and tilt convincers designed to make that illusion even more interesting to look at, even more amazing and captivating to look at. But the fact of the matter is, it's not really as an illusion built to have all that weight on it, right? When we start staring at it, when we start really just focusing all the attention on it, we ask the audience to give it a little bit more in, uh, attention than it deserves and it sort of raises their perceptual awareness and they start looking at it. And they might not know what's going on, but they know this really just is getting more attention than it needs and that something is going on and it starts to sort of disrupt the matrix of the magic that we're trying uh, to create. So what I'd like to talk to you about here briefly is if you're going to do something like tilt, just a nice way of making sure that you're managing the attention properly. Now you're going to have to look for a moment because you have to see where to actually stick the card. And that actually makes perfect sense. If you were going to take a card and stick it in the deck, you would sort of want to see exactly where it goes. But I have to say after that, the people who handle tilt the best that I know shift their focus back to the audience. Did you see what I just did there? I'm going to show it to you one more time. I'm going to take that card, Jack of Diamonds, and I'm going to stick it there in the pack, right? And then I'm going to press the card flush and move on because after I've already seen where to put the card, shifting the attention away from the pack allows the tilt uh, concept to be as deceptive as it possibly can. If I start to give it more energy after that, 
if I start to convince you further, the only thing that I'll actually convince you of is that maybe you should be watching more closely to what I'm doing because perhaps I'm not doing what I say. So that's today's episode of the Card Magic Minute. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you have a lot of fun practicing your depth illusion and tilt with this uh, new technique and uh, technology that we've discussed. Um, if you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear them. You can email me. I'm Aaron at AaronFisherMagic.com. And if you'd like to find out how students all over the world are using lessons with me online, my personal online training program, to unlock their true potential and become magic masters with playing cards, you can find out about that at Learn Card Tricks Online. Line.com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.